the invention of photography. In December 2014, Instagram's users topped 300 million. Since March, the photo sharing services user base grew exponentially from 200 to 300 million, while Twitter's user base had stalled at 284 million. This trend is illustrative of more than just society's preoccupation with selfies, feed pictures, and the endless search for the photogenic. It's a metaphor for the ongoing battle between text and image, pointing to what J. David Bolter terms the breakout of the visual, in which the rise of visual communication elements have remediated and refashioned text to dominate communication, especially today's digital forms. A quintessentially modern form of image making that dominates today's visual culture, photography emerged in the 19th century as machine-made pictures that documented life in the new industrial age. It was an invention that captured the zeitgeist of the time in both its form and products, but like any technology, photography wasn't created in a vacuum. It came into being in the first half of the 19th century during the Industrial Revolution in England and Western Europe, a time of extreme and rapid technological, geographic, social and cultural change. Innovations in energy production, like the steam engine, sowed the seeds of rapid mechanization which gave rise to factories, mass production of goods and the growth of cities. It redistributed wealth, unseating the aristocratic landowner and in its place crowning the capitalist as master of the new mechanized urban domain. At the same time, the middle class started to emerge and cities swelled as a new workforce moved in to fill the factory jobs. Pollution and unsafe working conditions were unfortunate byproducts of development. Critics began to question if society valued cheaper, more abundant goods over the well-being of its people. Because it was made by a machine, photography was critiqued by some as representative of the dark and inhuman side of industrialized society. As industry in Britain became more mechanized, it touched all facets of life, including publishing and printing, which had not seen much change since Gutenberg. In printing, methods of text production were jump-started with the invention of the steam press in 1814. The steam press automated the publishing process to a new degree and exponentially increased the availability and affordability of printed materials, which included more illustrated texts. Nineteenth century publics were becoming more literate and their reading was aided by the inclusion of pictures in printed texts, especially in the illustrated periodical press which exploded during that time. While technology to print text forged ahead, image making technology struggled to keep up. The majority of images were produced via woodcuts which craftsmen created from images drawn by skilled artists. Copper plate engravings were introduced in the 17th century, enabling finely detailed and accurate images that were used to illustrate scientific texts. As society became increasingly mechanized, engineers sought to record and explain increasingly complex steam-powered structures via technical illustrations, but text and image production processes remained separate and specialized. And as the demand for images as a way of distributing new knowledge grew, more and more people investigated ways of efficiently producing accurate representations of the world. In an attempt to mechanize the image, artists first explored simple machines like the camera obscura and camera lucida to add a measure of accuracy to their recording of nature. A camera obscura is a dark box or room with a small opening on one side. Light passes through the opening and projects an image of the objects outside onto the opposite surface. surface. Artists, particularly in the Renaissance, used the camera obscura to help them draw images that were true to life. In 1665, a portable camera obscura was developed, enabling artists to illustrate scenes away from their studios. Its major flaw was that it couldn't capture the image permanently, and artists had to finish their work at the scene or lose their work. Other drawing machines followed. The perspectograph introduced a window-like device that artists could use for capturing the accurate perspective of a scene before adding foreground figures. And later, as the demand for portraiture outstripped artistic supply, silhouettes became popular and the device for creating them, the physiognotrance, briefly satisfied the growing demand. At the same time, astronomy, math, chemistry, biology, medicine, and optics were seeking scientific explanations as to the nature of light. Finally, at the end of the 18th century, lithography was invented and the stage was set for the final leap to mechanical image production. It was French lithographer Joseph Niepce's search for an automatic process of transferring drawings to a printed plate that led to the first breakthrough in photography. Niepce created the sun engraving in 1822 by exposing a pewter sheet coated with light-sensitive materials to sunlight. Through an etching process, he created the first photo engraving. In 1827, he captured the first photo from nature when he put the pewter plate in the back of his camera obscura and exposed it to sunlight all day. 
In 1829, Nipsey and Louis Daguerre formal, formally collaborated. Daguerre was an artist involved with the theater, creating large dioramic backdrops for sets. He sought a more accurate and efficient way of creating these grand scenes. The two worked together until Nipsey died in 1833. By 1835, Daguerre had invented the daguerreotype, a unique photochemical image of silver iodide plate developed by exposure to mercury fumes. With his invention, machine-made photo photochemical imagery was born. Over 500,000 daguerreotypes were made in Paris in just its first year, and over 30 million in the U.S. from 1839 to 1860. Initially, they were primarily used for portraits, for which a mass latent demand lay amongst all social strata. Meanwhile in Britain, William Henry Fox Talbot was working on his own paper-based photographic process. Talbot made photograms by pressing objects against light-sensitive paper. He then developed the calotype, the first positive-negative paper-based photographic process. In 1835, Talbot experimented with photographic paper in his camera obscura, resulting in a reversed image in which light areas were dark and vice versa. He developed a process of contact printing to transform his negative to a positive image. Talbot continued to refine his light-sensitive paper in 18, and in 1844 published Pencil of Nature, the first book of photographs. Although methods of integrating text and photos and printed materials weren't invented until the turn of the century, Talbot's book was a harbinger of the real possibilities of photo-illustrated texts. However, both Talbot's and Daguerre's methods had their faults. The daguerreotype couldn't be reproduced, its size was predetermined, it needed to be developed immediately in a dark room, it was cumbersome to make, it was only in black and white, and required a long exposure time. Despite the calotype being reproducible and distributable, it was also criticized for being slightly blurry and fragile. The images faded quickly. While Talbot's process provided the foundations on which modern photography is based, the criticisms of both methods ultimately set the technical agenda for the development of photography for the rest of the century. Most notably, the development of the wet plays collodion process produced negatives on a glass plate, allowing for multiple paper-based copies, enlargements, shorter exposure time, and wider distribution. Then in 1861, the first color photo was created, and in 1871, the invention of the gelatin dry plate process meant negatives didn't need to be developed immediately and portable darkrooms became a thing of the past. The next revolution in photography occurred in 1880 when Stephen H. Hogan published the first reproduction of a photo in a newspaper via the half-tone process, a scene in Shantytown, published in the New York Daily Graphic. By the 1890s, half-tone technology was commercialized, marking the dawn of press photography and a new relationship between photographs, text, and knowledge. Prior to this, photographs were used as the basis for illustrations in the press. Editors would ensure the reading publics knew an engraving was based on a photograph which gave the image more credibility, because in 19th century popular discourse, photography was seen as evidence of proof, an accurate and immediate representation of its subject. It brought faraway places near, it made the unknowable known, and brought the unfamiliar within the grasp of any. In this way, reading and viewing publics could come to know the politician in London, the battlefield, the African savanna, the view from the top of a tall building or through a microscope. In other words, it provided a way of knowing about the world. And because the photograph is machine made, it was considered an objective record of reality, untainted by the agency and agenda of the photographer. Unlike an artist, the photographer's job was to simply document what was in front of them. Policing, medicine, and science relied on the construction of photography's inherent objectivity for proof. And at the extreme end of the spectrum, pseudosciences such as phrenology and physiognomy used photography to identify and disseminate 19th century notions of what mental illness and criminal behavior looked like. Ideas about photography's immediacy and authenticity continued as the technology advanced. Photo and rotogravure processes were developed at the turn of the century, enabling the large-scale printing of photographic images alongside text. This marked the first time image reproduction technology was compatible with the speed press, and it made the entire print process much more seamless and efficient, and the integration of text and photographic image in the popular press commonplace. As a result, the mass media reading experience was altered. Photographs and texts worked together to construct oscillating meanings for various British reading publics. In contrast to the linear bias of text, images caused the viewer to linger and return repeatedly, constructing multiple unfixed meanings within a single page. 
photography contributed to the meta-narrative around notions of empire and nationhood by providing documentary evidence of such activities and people at home and abroad. It also supported the education and improvement agenda of the popular press targeted towards the working class. Photography was born at the intersection of a cluster of technological innovations in the first half of the 19th century. It took many years before it was fully integrated with text in the medium of the popular press. These developments took place as a result of and in response to rising mass literacy rates and played a critical role in constructing and disseminating popular knowledge. Photographs were most often read as literal, objective representations of their subjects and worked with text to create meanings for their reading publics. They continue to do so today, although the primacy of text has given way to the dominance of photographic and moving images.